Hello and welcome to another Big Orbit unboxing video. I'm Chris and today I'll be looking at the Ixlan bundle. So 10 boosters in the bundle and uh, very nice packaging with Raska, a few dinosaurs and pirates. So uh, let's see what is inside. And uh, slide that out. So first things first, we've got the uh, the player's guide. Uh, quite a cool little booklet. Shows all the different cards from the set, so you can tick them off if you really want to. Uh, to show that you got them all, it's got a bit of backstory to it all. Um, all about the pirates, all about the vampires, all about the merfolk, and all about the dinosaurs. So this set is very tribal, hence. Uh, well, the different tribes, um, and exploring Exelan, and a few of the key cards in the set. Yep, a very useful booklet. And then we've got the actual box, which when we open up, contains a wonderful Ixalan 20-sided dice, spin-down one. So some people say the set symbol isn't that interesting, but right, it fits the theme. It's kind of like a compass slash um, like ship's wheel and we also get the land pack with the tokens so we'll uh, open that up quickly just see what's inside what kind of goodies we get so you got all the different uh, kinds of land See if we can spot Jace in any of them. Oh look, there he is. And there he is again. And there he is again. So, lots and lots of land. Oh, there's no tokens in this one. I'm surprised. I think I just got so used to, uh, you know, with Hour of Devastation and Amon Ket, just having the really cool double-sided token packs, um, which we don't have in this one. There's also the quick reference guide which uh, is very useful if you are a newer player. Gives you a bit of info on uh, how to cast things, all the different mana types, different types of cards, and it gives you a nice breakdown of the turn and all the different phases and when you can react to things. And the next step is buying Planeswalker pack apparently. So I can sit over there and we will just get cracking with these packs. I do like the box as well now because they, they give you this little insert so you can actually keep your deck separate to the rest of the cards in the box. So we'll chuck that back on top. Right. And let's see what goodies we get in the packs. So we've got Jewel Shot, Slash of Talons, Mark of the Vampire, Sure Strike, Sailor of Means, Spike Tail Ceratops, Pirate's Prize, Ixali's Diviner, Thrash of Raptors, Dive Down, and for Uncommons we have Wanted Scoundrels, Emissary of Sunrise, a card that I like quite a lot, 3 mana 2 1 with First Strike that explores as well. So, explore one of the mechanics from the set where you reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand if it's land, otherwise, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on this creature and put it back on top of your library or into your graveyard if you want to kind of cycle it, let's say. Uh, River Sneak and Blood Crazed Paladin as the rare. Two mana, one, one with Flash. Uh, and it, when it enters the battlefield, um, you get a plus one, plus one counter for each creature that died this turn. So you can get some pretty good combos off if you want to uh, trade your stuff in uh, and then flash this in and make it big. We have a land and a treasure token. So, Pterodon Knight, Blight Keeper, Tillanan these Knight, Queen, Queen's Commission, Siren Lookout, Jade Guardian, Shaper Apprentice, New Horizons, Paladin of the Bloodstained, and a Gilded Sentinel. And for Uncommons, we've got Perilous Voyage, 
Merfolk Branch Walker, Charging Monstrosaur. Yep, really good in uh, Limited especially. 5 mana, 5-5 five, five with Trample and Haste. You can steal some games with this one. And a Verdant Sun's Avatar is our rare. So a 7 mana, 5-5 five, five Dinosaur. Um, when it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So pretty nice bit of life gain there. And uh, I guess it's supposed to be played in a high toughness, low power deck where you just get lots of benefits for, for having the higher toughness. Still have a pack. Another Sun Crowned Hunters. Vampire Zeal, Dead Eye Tormentor, Shore Strike, Sailor of Means, Spike Tail Ceratops, Pirate's Prize, Exalius Diviner, Demystify, Grazing Whiptail. And onto the uncommons, We've got Wild Growth Walker, pretty cool two mana one three. Uh, that whenever another creature you control explores, put a one one counter on Wild Growth Walker and gain three life. So this guy can get pretty big in the right deck. So quite a cool card. Perilous Voyage, Deathless Ancient, and a Sorcerer's Spyglass as a rare two mana artifact. And when it enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand and then choose any card name. Uh, activated abilities of sources with a chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So very, very good against Planeswalkers. Uh, and there's quite a few other things in the set that it can hit as well as things from other sets, like previous sets. Um, quite a lot of artifacts that you might want to stop the abilities on. So quite a cool card. And a Swamp and a Merfolk token. Where the packs in bundles are harder to open than ones from booster boxes. Uh, we've got Fathom Fleet Firebrand, Legion Conquistador, Dire Fleet Hoarder, Tillanali's Knight, Sailor of Means, Exali's Keeper, we've got Opt, uh, really cool uh, one blue instant to scry one then draw. Uh, this should see a lot of play. We've got Jade Guardian, Thrash of Raptors again, and Dive Down. We seem to be seeing a lot of the same commons, and we've only opened three packs. Or is that the fourth pack? I'm losing track already. Got Lightning Rig Crew, another Wild Growth Walker, and Char Course, and Sunbird's Invocation as the rare, which is a pretty cool rare actually. I like it a lot. So, six mana enchantment, and whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, Really nice way of getting like extra stuff out each turn. So, you know, getting two four drops out is pretty nice for just four mana. Um, and you also get to kind of get through your library a bit faster, uh, in theory. So, yeah, nice card. Probably a bit slow to uh, see a huge amount of play, but uh, should be good in Commander, put it that way. Got Skyblade of the Legion, Skittering Heartstopper, Depths of Desire, Commune with Dinosaurs, Jungle Delver, Ancient Brontodon, Tishana's Wayfinder, Prying Blade, Headstrong Brute, uh, another Lightning Recruit, Merfolk Branch Walker, Charging Monstrosaur, and for some reason that is in the rare slot. <laughs> um, New Horizons in foil in the rare slot. But that's because we've got Search for. Uh, as Canter in the uh, actual rare slot. That's, oh, it's because, okay, that's a flip card. The flip card is normally where the foil sits in the pack, so it's bumped it forward. That's strange. Uh, so this is two mana for a legendary enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your graveyard. Then if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, transform search for example as Canter. I'm going to butcher some of these words, but bear with me. Um, I like the fact that it's May rather than just straight up transform. It gives you the choice. And it transforms into a legendary land as Canter the Sunken Ruin. Uh, you can tap it to add blue, or you can pay three uh, and tap it to look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a non creature, non land card from among them, and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So, pretty good card digging for spells. Uh, I could see some play in blue decks. Uh, or quite a lot of play in blue decks. I mean, two mana for 
the potential of this effect is actually really nice. It's not the best of the uh, coloured flip legendary lands, but it's certainly not the worst. So looming Altasaur, Queen's Base Soldier, Fire Shrine of Keeper, Fire Shrine Keeper, not Fire Shrine of the Keeper, uh, One with the Wind, Crash the Ramparts, Fire Cannon Blast, Dire Fleet, Interloper, Encampment Keeper, Run Aground at Unknown Shores. Then we've got Sentinel Totem, uh, Ixalan's Binding, Sky Terror, quite a nice 2 drop, 2-2 uh, Flying Menace. And a Mythic, nice uh, Overflowing Insight, so 7 mana to draw 7 cards at sorcery speed. Um, I mean, decent in commander. Maybe too, well, almost definitely too slow for uh, for standard. But you never know. Hopefully I'll be proved wrong. Now I suppose if you've got overflowing insight with the uh, legendary merfolk um, creature where you have no hand size, could be pretty good. Nest Robber, Samurai Seeker, Desperate Castaways, Depths of Desire, Commune with Dinosaurs, Fire Cannon Blast, Spreading Rot, Costly Plunder, Headwater Centuries, and Hierophant's Chalice. Then in the uncommon slots we have Kite Sail Freebooter, Sentinel Totem, Charter Course, and our rare is a Fell Flagship. Nice. Um, this will probably end up in some Pirate decks. Three mana um, vehicle. So Pirates you control get plus one plus oh. So already decent kind of semi-anthem effect. Um, in the sense that it doesn't give extra toughness, just the power. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card and crew three. So yeah, pretty good. Um, you can either swing in with a horde of pirates or if you're on a bit of a discard theme, um, crew the flagship and uh, swing in with the flagship. And the forest and the treasure. So Shore Strike, Queen's Commission, Blight Keeper, Shipwreck Looter, Community Dinosaurs, Ancient Bronze Dawn, Pounce, Prime Blade, Headstrong Brute, and Kinjali's Caller. Then Favorable Winds, pretty good. Uh, giving away creatures plus one plus one uh, that have flying. Kite Sail Freebooter and Bonded Horncrest. Then we have a Deep Root Champion, which uh, could really see a lot of play. Um, in the Merfolk deck, this is great. Two mana for a 1-1, one, one, but whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Deep Root Champion. Uh, the Merfolk deck seems to be very tempo oriented, so you should have quite a few spells in it. And therefore, this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, especially if you get it out early and it doesn't die. So, pretty good card. I don't think it's going to single-handedly carry the Murpho deck necessarily, but uh, it's certainly a good addition to it. Suncrown Hunters, Vampire Zeal, Desperate Castaways, Fire Shrine Keeper, Shore Keeper, Ravenous Daggertooth. Pious Interdiction, Crushing Canopy, Water Trap Weaver, Duress, and more favourable wins. Ixlands Binding, and another Sky Terror, and Entrancing Melody. And this is a card I will be trying out because I think it's quite cool. Um, so, two blue and X as a sorcery to gain control of Tiger Creature with converted mana cost X. Um, yeah, even if you just get an early creature with it, so like a, a two drop or something. Um, it's just straight up steel, it's not an enchantment, so they can't get it back, uh, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, or late game, um, steal one of their four or five drops, and you're getting great value out of that. So, could be pretty good. And a swamp and a treasure, and the last pack. Nice, uh, that one. Oh, Frenzied Raptor, Slash Talons, Queen's Agent, Brazen Buccaneers, Depths of Desire, Deep Root Warrior, Contract Killing, Hijack, and a Watch Trap Weaver, and Binding Fog, then Emergent Growth, Axan Archer, 
demo plunderers and settle the wreckage. This is one that should see quite a lot of play actually. Uh, four mana instant exile all attacking creatures target player controls. That player may search his or her library for that many basic land cards. Put those cards onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. Um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be quite a few aggressive sort of mid-range creature-based strategies. So white does have one of the few answers um, to, to that, really. And sell the wreckage is that answer. So a very good card. So yeah, that is all 10 packs from the bundle. Uh, we've got some more right stuff actually. I think the Settle the Wreckage is, is kind of nice. Got the Entrancing Melody, the Champion, the Flagship, uh, the Search for Ascanta. Um, I mean, this isn't amazing, but I still like it. That has potential. Verdant Sun's Avatar, a bit meh. And the Blood Craze Paladin is, is pretty good as well. So, some good rares. And we, we did manage to pull a Mythic as well in Overflowing Insight even though it's not one of the best mythics in the set. But still, can't complain too much. So that is actually everything that's in the box. Um, maybe it's just because of Hour of Devastation and Amon Ket and that whole block where we got all the extra little benefits and things. Um, maybe it just feels like we're not getting as much anymore. We've just been spoiled. Uh -huh. <laughs> But, you know, still worth getting your hands on a bundle. And remember, you can buy and sell any of the cards you've seen in this video uh, on our website, bigorbitcards.co.uk. And thank you for watching. Um, very excited for Pirates and Dinosaurs. So hopefully you are all too. And uh, we'll see you in the next unboxing video. Bye.